Well, the UN Relief Agency slamming what it calls the disregard for the protection of civilian infrastructure all over Gaza. It says even one of its agency's staff guest houses in southern Gaza was hit by an Israeli naval strike over the weekend. CNN has asked the IDF about that strike. This despite Mr Netanyahu's assurances that there will be corridors leading to safe zones in the south. So we have designated routes to a safe zone south of Gaza City where there's no uh, fighting. And we're telling them, go ahead, move. And by the way, 70,000 have moved three days ago. I think 50,000 moved yesterday. More will move today. We want all the civilians to be removed out of harm's way. And Hamas is doing everything in their power to keep them in harm's way. Well, I've just had the chance to speak to the Commissioner General of UNRWA, Philip Lazzarini. And I began by asking about those evacuation corridors. Here is our full conversation. There is absolutely no safe zone in the Gaza Strip. Uh, there have been maybe corridor, humanitarian corridor, to allow people to go from the north to the south. But if you look at uh, um, only the, the UN, which uh, normally should have a premises protecting people, where we have about 750,000 people being uh, sheltered, we had more than 60 of our installation which have been hit. Uh, and 70% of this installation were in the south. This has led to the death of more than 60 people and 100 people injured. Only yesterday, we had the guest house of the UN in Rafa in the south, which has also been hit. And this is a guest house where international staff normally used to be. Fortunately, no one was there at the time of, of the shoot of, of the missile. More than... A hundred UN employees have been killed since October the 7th. Uh, the UN today having a moment of silence for all of those killed. How difficult has this crisis been for your organisation? Well, this has been completely devastating. We have reached more than one, uh, 101 colleagues uh, who have been killed uh, since the beginning of this war. They have all been uh, colleagues, uh, father, mothers, people dedicated to their communities, uh, many teachers, nurses, doctors, uh, younger, elderly uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, and I do believe that uh, UNRWA will never be the same uh, anymore after, after, after such a uh, uh, devastating uh, period. Unfortunately, Becky, my fear is that we might even have uh, more staff having been uh, killed, the one, uh, the 101 are the one we we, we can confirm that uh, indeed uh, they have been uh, killed over the last uh, months. And I fear again that we might have many, many more, and especially uh, those who haven't been in contact with uh, might be under the rubble, or we might have just lost contact uh, with their families. So you're saying that you are sadly quite confident that that number of 101 killed in this conflict is likely to rise? Unfortunately, it will most likely uh, increase, yes. I have, over the past, what, five weeks now, um, watched you address the United Nations Security Council. I've seen you address or certainly seen images of you addressing Antony Blinken, the US Secretary of State in Jordan, uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago. You, uh, this last weekend, addressed the Arab and Islamic Leaders Summit in Riyadh. Um, what is your sense about whether or not that summit will lead to any improvement in the situation? What was your feedback from the meetings that you had in Riyadh? In, in Riyadh, the main, the main call has been a ceasefire, and uh, besides the ceasefire, a significant increase of the volume of assistance in the Gaza Strip. And I also keep saying it's not just the humanitarian assistance, because we as humanitarian, we will not be in a situation to provide the basic to 2.2 million people who have lost absolutely everything. It is also equally important that uh, basic services like municipal services, uh, water, electricity do run, and that there is still uh, also 
a private sector to allow people to have access to basic community uh, commodities uh, in uh, in the market. So all these conferences uh, have been extremely important in order to build up uh, a consensus about the urgent need of an humanitarian ceasefire, but also about the understanding that a handful of uh, trucks entering right now in the Gaza Strip uh, are not making a difference, uh, and that very soon people will start to die because of the impact uh, of the severe uh, siege imposed uh, on 2.2 million people. But Philippe, the problem is, at this point, I hear your words, you have had the opportunity to brief so many key stakeholders, and yet we still don't have a, a humanitarian pause, let alone a cessation of violence or ceasefire. I know how difficult that is for you. How confident are you that any time soon that will be the eventuality? How optimistic are you at this, this point? This is deeply, deeply frustrating. Um, I'm also trying to convey the message that uh, we need to express uh, empathy what's what's unfolding under our watch is just uh, unbearable and uh, i really hope uh, that we are now reaching the threshold where we say enough uh, is enough uh, and i do believe that today we have more and more leaders uh, who are genuinely calling for an humanitarian ceasefire you genuinely think that what why is it what why is it that you that you have that confidence a lot of people will say that they simply don't don't see that as a reality uh, in the air or on the ground at this point. I, I, I don't have the confidence that there will be a ceasefire anytime soon, but I'm seeing a shift in the narrative uh, with a certain number of uh, leaders who recently were still reluctant to call for an humanitarian ceasefire and now mm. seeing the death toll in the Gaza Strip uh, say there is no other avenue than to lead to this. So I'm still hoping that all those with influence will succeed to, 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 you know, to impact uh, the decision for a ceasefire. But as you say, unfortunately, we are not yet there. I know that you wouldn't normally um, entertain, you know, a, 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 a political sort of narrative. But uh, with respect, you know, exactly. it is politicians that you are speaking to these days uh, and you know how important it is um, that, uh, that, that we get some sort of humanitarian pause. My sense is that you are speaking about President Biden, the US. I mean, how, how constructive of conversations that you've been having with congressmen and women, you know, senators, uh, men and women from the House of Representatives, you know, are, are they listening in the United States? I'm, I'm equally also reaching out uh, to lawmakers in Europe uh, and to leaders in Europe. Uh, what, I, what I have seen is that uh, the narrative uh, from the first uh, few days uh, were basically all the empathy was expressed towards Israel, and rightly so, because of the brutal uh, uh, murder and massacre of more than 1,200 people by the Hamas in uh, Israel. But equally, uh, the empathy was lacking for some time. So the language of international humanitarian law was also lacking at least for a week and 10 days. Mm -hmm. And this has definitely fueled here in the region the feeling that there is a double standard in uh, international humanitarian law. This has fortunately evolved, and I noticed not only in Europe, but also in uh, the United States. Now, the next phase should be that all this needs to lead to an humanitarian ceasefire. Six weeks in, what is your message, sir? Listen, today I have been informed that if we do not receive a fuel today, there will be no convoy in the Gaza Strip anymore as from tomorrow. We run out of fuel for the handling of the truck as of this evening. We are running out of fuel when it comes to providing it to hospitals, to water station, to bakeries, but also to all our shelter across the Gaza Strip. It is time now that uh, uh, the crossing be open for these critical uh, commodities uh, in, uh, in the strip. Otherwise, 
we will, what we have seen, unfortunately, will not be the end of this catastrophe unfolding under our watch.